Sorry, had uh, started recording. Can you say that again? I am born and I'm doing 31. In which section? Uh, 2.5. So, and this one is asking to find the limits in our closest continuous separate sentence. Um, so uh, when I did this, I looked it up on Desmos to see the graphs in the graph books. Yeah, it just keeps on going. Um, so when you're approaching it from the right, it is continuous, but from the left, it's not. And the only reason is because when you put a negative number into your um, square roots, it doesn't exist. Um, you can't have negative numbers in square roots. So, and then the limit of this is, is one. You can plug in zero here. Square root of zero is zero. E to the zero power is one. And then sine of um, pi half is one. I agree with that. Expanding slightly on a few things we just heard. This is not continuous, it is right continuous, if you remember that definition. Um, using Desmos is fine. Of course, you wouldn't have it on a test, for example. Another argument is that constant is just a continuous function, and the exponential is continuous, and the square root is continuous, and the sign is continuous. We had that big list of continuous functions that we presented last Wednesday, it must have been. So we've got products and compositions of continuous functions. So stuff should be continuous, except that as you noticed, we can't approach X from the negative direction. This is 39 and 2.5. Mm -hmm. That's not what 39 and 2.5 is. I was gonna say, do we have oh, no. And I'm recording. Um, I'm Mackenzie Rising, and I had number 30 on 2.5. Possible, can you not try to keep yeah. the uh, notebook sort of oriented? Okay. So, thank you. Um, so where I started with this one was on um, the... What are you trying to do with that piecewise defined function? I mean, what's the problem, say? Oh. Um, at which points are the functions continuous? Thank you. Go on. So then I start out with the first function and um, factoring that. Um, through trial and error, I found that it factors down to x squared plus 2x plus 4 times x minus 2 and then over x minus or x plus 2 x minus 2. Then these will cancel out and then you're left with x squared plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2 and then I, the first one I plugged in was the 2, so then it was 2, 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4 over 2 plus 2, and then that gives you 12 over 4, 
And that comes out to three. Go down the unit of x will take this two of x cubed minus eight over x squared minus four equals three. And then for the x cannot equal negative two, if you plug in negative two, it'll give you a division by zero. So then that does not exist. That's right. That's good okay. so far. <laughs> Um, so then, you want me to write that down? Uh, you can just say it out loud. Okay. Um, and then the next functions, um, if I'm right, I looked in the book and it said that f of x had to equal f of c. The limit as x approaches c of f of x has to equal f of c. Okay. So then, um, if you plug these in, two cannot equal three, and negative two cannot equal four. So I put that the limit doesn't equal the function value. Um, you might be misreading this piecewise defined function slightly. So what this notation is telling you is that at negative two, this function is four and at positive two this function is three but it's not continuous so to be continuous at two the limit as x approaches two has to equal f of 2. And this limit is correct. The limit as x approaches 2 is 3. And f of 2 is also 3. So this is continuous at 2. Right? Yes. At negative 2, Um, let me see. At negative two, the limit doesn't exist. You've canceled everything there is to cancel, but negative two still gives you a division by zero error. So if the limit doesn't exist at negative two, it certainly can't equal four, and it can't be continuous at negative two. So that that would be the argument I made, I guess. This is continuous everywhere except for negative two, where the limit doesn't exist. Do